it's not very deep snow in here because of this uh, dense vegetation but in more open fields there are yeah approximately half a meter of snow so um, so what, what I'm going to do now I'm planning to show you how to make snowshoes not the typical round tennis racket snowshoe type but a more sufficient one for uh, um, yeah for walking and and uh, a type that will be able to carry your weight and backpack and everything so I need to find some good topics for that Yeah, now I got my 10 saplings and, and a couple of other pieces, which I'm gonna need. So, I'm gonna head back home and get these thawed up because they are solid frozen. It's like minus 16, minus 17 or so now. So it's, uh, well, <laughs> they are frozen. Uh, when we do this outside, we uh, have them by the fire for a moment, so so they will thaw up. If if not, they will very easily break when you start bending and stuff. So, but for this time, I'm gonna do it inside. So. Now the saplings have been. Um, indoors in a bucket for a couple of hours so that everyone are thawed up and not frozen anymore so what I'm going to do now I'm going to cut them into um, useful length everyone to the same length and then I'm going to remove all the bark so let's get into it I have to sort them out a little bit so, so I can see it we get almost the same thickness. We have quite equal thickness, but a little variation doesn't matter. And the length I want to have is about a body length. So if you are like two meters high, you should have these like two meters. If you're 150. We should try 150. It's not an exact science, but average. It's uh, it's kind of okay. So we'll see. Now I will start with a good sharp knife and remove the bark on everyone. You don't have to remove the bark, but by remo removing the bark, you're binding, you're binding them together, and they will stay um, tighter and will not come loose that easy. Now I have um, removed the bark on all of them. So I'm now going to just round, round off this a little bit. Not much, it's just for looks almost. And then uh, about a centimeter from the end, I'm going to make a little groove. That's for it. 
mm, the cordage to a little trace to follow or to, to lay in. So it will be more um, secured. Just like so on each one. To tie them together, I want to use this. It's uh, what some people call a bank line. It's uh, a tarred nylon cord. Uh, I like it, like this a lot. It's uh, very strong, robust, and can last a very long time. This is uh, smells really good. Um, I'm used to this from my childhood because I grew up by the coast, so this was. Uh, Kind of standard. <laughs> um, yeah, at the boat house and everything. So we used to fix all fishing gear and stuff. So I'll take out about. Uh, I'll try the two meter long piece. Uh, I find the middle. This is the middle, and I'll start. This is I want to have a thick one on each side and a thick one in the middle. It would be nice. So, well, we'll start with this one. So what I do, I just tie this in its overhand. Overhand knot like so, and then I do several overhand knots to create a distance to the next one. So I have three, four, five, six. Let me see. Will be like so, maybe one more, seven. But this this counting does not need to match up um, with any chord because it's uh, um, this is quite thin. So now I put it on, on the next one and I wrap it around each side. That's just to. Make this whole thing a little bit stronger. And <coughs> try to get a knot on the opposite side. So you see, there's one, so I need the next one on this side. Two. Now they are all tied together. There's a little little bit of stretch in this cord, but not much because of all these knots, but that's okay. The next step will be to find the center balance point. So to do that, we will kind of have to temporary. Push the ends. Here, it's quite well balanced. Okay, so now it's here. I don't want to use my knife and make a notch because I will weaken the wood. So I will mark it either with a sharpie or you can just take a lighter piece of coal or something just to make some soot mark.
other thing if you see here uh, one is slightly higher than the other one I use the highest one uh, from a toe because then my toe are able to lift like so a little bit more than if it was just flat like so that should be good and if these are pretty straight as these are then the next one should have exactly the same pattern but if these are really crooked you might have to uh, adjust it a little bit but as you can see these are quite straight on this on this piece at least so I can do the same pattern on, on the other one and where's my where's my mark so put it center on a mark Here it is, now it's done. All these are solid and you can see the shape. It's getting wider in the middle and narrow at the top. Now we're gonna do the top and this is just temporary. And then just tie it together. I'm gonna to tie this together, and in this, um, when I put this front piece in, I made uh, a loop. So I will bend this tip up and and. Uh, anchor it to this loop so I can get this uh, like a ski tip so I'll do that these are already starting to get uh, quite dry uh, just been in a couple of hours but still they're uh, drying quickly and, and the wood is uh, have less um, sap during the winter so it's a little bit more brittle than uh, saplings uh, other part of the year, part of the year so uh, but I'll do this with paracord first and just try to make a bend and, and um, kind of shape the, the, the saplings, shape the wood and when it's a bit shaped I will remove the paracord and I will add this other line instead. I will also not use this, I would use one from here, one from here going in a loop in front of my boot and from there up to the tip because I used I, I did this like this on my first one and as you can see when I'm walking I'm kind of tensioning this um, it, it's not a big problem but it's still it's in the way so I'll loop it from each side instead First one's done, now I just have to make the twin. This will be good. Well, here they are. Ready for some good testing. To attach these to your boots, you can use paracord or you can use uh, a rope, anything actually. But the most, the best thing to use is some kind of webbing. So I just have a piece of webbing. So the first thing I do. make the 
loop that will fit through my over my toe. So I take the loop up and in in the back part. I've seen some people do it in the front, but um, I experienced for me at least. It's uh, I think it's better to do it in the back. I could have done it over here, but as you can see, if I do that, there will be a lot of slack on each end. So I don't want to do that. So I do it like so with my toe, not too far on the front. Uh, kind of tighten these and since I put it like this these will actually tighten this one if I had the uh, uh, loop on the front side and these ends coming out on the back side I wouldn't be able to tighten this as good as now so from here I'll make a cross section on top of my boots that will help prevent my boot from sliding forward and kind of loosen the heel grip so and then across it behind my boot and I can tie it off now when I walk my heel is loose like a ski binding and you see the tip raise up that's because this is the center of gravity and this is forward so we're lifting forward and the tip will rise and go on top of the snow then uh, instead of going through the snow so that's much better since I don't have any more of these webbings I have some other like this uh, uh, cargo securing straps. I'm gonna use them instead. And it works for the same. As you can see, I'm able to move a little bit sideways, but it's not too much. It's not too bad. So if you take a look now and compare it to when I was walking without these hmm, snowshoes, only my boots. Now I'm thinking like 10. 15 centimeters, yeah, about 10 ish centimeters down in the snow instead of 40 or 50 centimeters. Well, as you can see now, my snowshoes are kind of lifting up, and, and I don't even have this wide snowshoe way of walking. With these, I can walk pretty normal and with, with my legs. It's not a big problem and it's easy to walk with. So, So I hope this was inspiring and maybe you should try yourself. It's not very really hard. 
This is something you can make by the campfire during a afternoon evening. It's uh, yeah, it's a couple of hours of work, but still, it's uh, it's uh, it's fun to do. So I will absolutely recommend it. Um, these are called Roycroft snowshoes, I think. Um, I've seen it in several books and stuff, so this is my second pair. Uh, I did some changes to this compared to the first original one from the book because of the experience with the first pair. So this condition is not the best because it's like 50 centimeters of loose snow. When snowshoes works the best is when you have some uh, weak crusty layers which are not able to carry your weight. Put snowshoes on and you can walk on top of it. So that's the most ideal um, kind of conditions when snowshoes are good. But even here now in this um, loose snow uh, scenario as we got now, it is remarkably much better to walk with this than without. It's uh, yeah, I'm sinking like a third of the depth with this, and since they are designed as they are, they will always lift up and go on top of the snow when I'm walking. I'm sorry for all the background noise, it's strange, but the highway is like two kilometers away, but still, it's it's very noisy. So I'm out on a field to get more snow depth than you have in the forest. So that's why. So thank you for watching. I do appreciate your support in watching my videos uh, very much. Um, thank you again. Mm -hmm.